Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Ghostbusters Afterlife released a trailer for the follow-up to Ghostbusters 1984 and Ghostbusters 2, with many of the creative team from the originals returning, including appearances by Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Sigourney Weaver, and Annie Potts, and written and directed by Jason Reitman, son of the originals director Ivan Reitman. And it looks like this new film is getting a lot of things right. The mix of comedy with true horror, subtle callbacks to the beloved nerdy characters themselves, and a no cliche soft piano cover of the Ray Parker Jr. theme. Pass. I'd rather just not have it. But hopefully they'll put the original in the movie. Let's run through this trailer to break down anything you might have missed. Spoiler warning in case I accidentally spoil the movie like a dickless. Here we go. What are you doing here in Somerville anyway? Honestly, my mom won't say it, but we're completely broke. And the only thing that's left in our name is this creepy old farmhouse our grandfather left us in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so we meet the family at the heart of this film, Stranger Things, Finn Wolfhard as Trevor, McKenna Grace as Phoebe, and their mother, Callie, played by Carrie Coon. They've moved to Somerville, Oklahoma, into their grandfather's old house. Now, it's not confirmed yet, but it's pretty clear that their grandfather is Egon Spangler, who is played by the late great Harold Ramis. There's a lot of clues, but you can already tell by Phoebe's glasses, which are almost exactly the same kind that Spangler wore. In their home, there's a framed photo on the side table that kind of looks like it could include Ramis, and some have also said that the photo by the doorpost back there looks kind of like an image of the real Ghostbusters animated series? Kind of hard to tell. Now, I guess it's also possible that this farmhouse belonged to the Stance family, the house that Ray mortgaged three times to get the money for their business. You're never gonna regret this, Ray. My parents left me that house. I was born there. You're not gonna lose the house. Everybody has three mortgages nowadays. But it is almost certainly Spangler's house, as we will see from the rest of the trailer. Why'd you bring me up here? Entertainment value. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Right, Trevor makes friends with some of the Somerville kids and they hang out over this mine shaft. Now, later in this trailer, we will see that the Somerville mines are owned by Shandor Mining Company, established in 1927. So this is an Easter egg nodding to Ivo Shandor from the first film, leader of the cult worshiping Gozer and the villain of the Ghostbusters video game. Stance and Spengler explain the history of the building and Shandor. The whole building is a huge superconductive antenna that was designed and built expressly for the purpose of pulling in and concentrating spiritual turbulence. The architect's name was Evo Shandor. I found it in Tobin's spirit guide. He was also a doctor, performed a lot of unnecessary surgery. And then in 1920, he started a secret society. After the First World War, Shandor decided that society was too sick to survive. And he wasn't alone. He had close to a no. thousand followers when he died. They conducted rituals up on the roof. Bizarre rituals intended to bring about the end of the world, and now it looks like it may actually happen. They also explained that the building was rigged with unusual girders. Cold, riveted girders with cores of pure selenium. Perhaps that selenium was mined here in Oklahoma. And later in his life, Spangler moved to this location to investigate the paranormal activity of Shandor's mines. Let's move on. Somehow, a town that isn't anywhere near a tectonic plate, that has no fault lines, no fracking, no loud music even, is shaking on a daily basis. To the dining table now! Hey, remember that one summer we died under a table? Okay, we meet Mr. Gruberson, Paul Rudd, a seismologist studying the town's unusual daily earthquakes. He's apparently a fan of the Ghostbusters from their heroics in New York in the 1980s, and I'm wondering if he might actually be a Gozer worshiper who has come to this town under the guise of research, but we'll see. Actor Tracy Letts cameos as a guy in a workshop with rows of keys. Maybe there's some connection here to the key master of Gozer, the demigod Vins Clortho, who possessed Rick Moranis' Lewis and joined his counterpart Zul, who inhabited Dana. It'll be interesting if Letts' character gets inhabited by the key master and Carrie Coon gets inhabited by the gatekeeper since Letts and Coon are married in real life. But the big reference here is the stack of books, just like the one in the library in the first movie. Symmetrical book stacking, just like the Philadelphia Man's Turbulence of 1947. You're right, no human being would stack books like this. I'm praying that after they write to this table, someone says, and the flowers are still standing. But before I continue, thanks to Manscaped.com for sponsoring this episode. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene. It's the holiday gifting season and you deserve the gift of Manscaped and their Perfect Package Essentials Kit, which is the world's first all-in-one manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. Be sure to try out the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Refreshing Spray. 
Mm. You put deodorants on your armpits, right? So why wouldn't you put deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? I mean, busting might make you feel good, but you also gotta bust the bad smells from out of you. So when you purchase the Perfect Package 2.0 kit online at manscaped.com, you'll get the biggest bang for your buck. As a subscriber, you'll get 20% saving on your order instantly, a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer, delivered to your door every three months, making sure your trimmer stays fresh and clean. And for a limited time, subscribers will get not one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, and the patented high-performance ah, anti-chafe boxer briefs. Ladies, this is really the perfect gift for your bad Santa this holiday season. And fellas, when you trim the tree, the presents look bigger. Get 20% off free shipping and two free gifts when you purchase the new Perfect Package 2.0 kit with my code NEWROCK at manscaped.com. Let's move on. I found this in my living room. Whoa, killer replica. A replica of what? A ghost trap? Baby finds under the floorboards a ghost trap and a trap door. Nice. Later, Gruberson will briefly open this trap and a ghost is definitely in there. Notice the three note piano cue here. Ghost trap? That is the same exact creepy score in the opening scene of the original film. You smell something? Onward. There hasn't been a ghost sighting in 30 years. New York in the 80s, it's like The Walking Dead. Your dad never mentioned this to you? It's just my mom. Okay, there's a shot of a creepy factory setting and a ghost that resembles Slimer, but might not be him exactly. The original actors and writers joked that Slimer was the ghost of John Belushi. So maybe this film will continue that tradition with a class five full roaming vapor affectionately based on the ghost of Harold Ramis. And maybe it's these kids' grandfather who is in the trap and stacked all the books as he found them in that library. Gruberson shows them the old news footage from the original films and Phoebe follows a PKE meter to this basement accessed by sliding down a pole, just like the Ghostbusters firehouse. Moving on. My grandfather died. My mom says we're just here to pick through the rubble of his life. Wait a minute. Who are you? Okay, if there's any doubt, this is definitely Spangler's Farm. Not just because the Spangler jumpsuit among those four, there are petri dishes of spores, mold, and fungus that are everywhere, just as Spangler told us that he collects. I collect spores, molds, and fungus. And that's just gotta be Spangler's collection among the proton pack there. Moving on. Call it faith. Call it luck. Call it karma. I believe that everything happens for a reason. Okay, over the shots of Shandor Mine that I mentioned before, we hear the voice of Venkman in the first film. Ray, call it faith. Call it luck. Call it karma. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And Trevor finds the Ecto-1 in the shed, which we see more of in the next clip. Come on, darling. Some ghostly force attacks Phoebe on a school bus, and then she faces some epic hellmouth where you can make out demonic hands reaching out at her. And the return of the terror dog is confirmed, with one stepping on the hood of Gruberson's car. And then Trevor Joy rides the Ecto-1, and the license plate is unchanged. The car is unveiled plate first, as it was in the first movie. And this is the Ecto-1, not the upgraded Ecto-1A from Ghostbusters 2. That just might be a different car entirely, though. Maybe Stance will roll up in it. That'd be awesome. Moving on to the final clip. A gunner seat? Okay, we learned that the Ecto-1 has a gunner seat, awesome, which it did not have in the original film, but the toy did have a seat on the roof, and they chased down this class five vapor through the town, frying up the buildings with the stream as the Ecto-1's classic siren blares. See, it's the little things that evoke the strongest nostalgia. And it wasn't in the US trailer, but the German trailer featured them with the Ecto goggles, which print out a Polaroid. Oh my God. Das ist das Beste, was ich je gesehen habe. Comment down below with your favorite part of this trailer. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.